I have what I consider to be a nice drawing right across the room there. And maybe I'm just going to walk right up to it and tear it. And then I'm going to rebuild that. I look back on art school with uh, mixed feelings, with both relief and sadness. I was a um, single parent with a family, no marketable skills. What I'm sad about is not me, but my children, and how that uh, it was very, very hard on them. So. I look back on it but without any of the joy of younger people going to school with no responsibilities. In Brockport State, I went to school there and uh, Jack Wolski was a mentor. He was a mentor then and he's a mentor 40 years later. And then from there I went to the Maryland Institute, dragged my kids half across the country. Difficult experience there simply because of trying to manage with the family. And then we moved back to New York. Good old Jack came through, got me a part-time gig at Dropport State. And uh, so I taught there for a year and learned a lot about what not to do in teaching. Because no one teaches you how to teach. After that, I got a full-time position at Potsdam State and I taught there for three or four years and they offered me tenure but I got another full-time position, tenure track at Ithaca College and um, I taught at Ithaca College for uh, 22 years I think. They gave me a meritar when I left, so I did well. What I liked about teaching is how much I learned. So you get students that just come for uh, a grade because they have to fill a fine art component and they think art is easy, so we'll take that course. And then they find out, especially in my classes, that it wasn't so bloody easy. And um, so, what I've discovered in my teaching career is that the best way to teach is to entertain. If you can entertain the students, you get their attention. One semester I had a group of theatre students. I was having a good time with them and, uh, you know, the middle of the semester comes and they start drifting away. There's more important things than art. So I very intentionally went up behind an especially outgoing student and looked at his work and he, I said to him, well, that's a bunch of cods wallop, and walked away and he burst out laughing. And for the rest of the semester, would you believe that simple comment? The rest of the semester, they went behind each other's work and said, that's cods wallop. And they worked, they worked. <laughs> and paid attention, and it was wonderful. I stayed in a barn in Newfield for a while, and I thought, boy, the space in here is amazing. I decided uh, that's what I wanted to get, was a kind of big space. And as luck would have it, this barn was up for sale. I decided, you know, I'm going to spend my life here, so I'm going to put some money into it. And over the years, I've had it all renovated, little by little by little. The studio has been good like this because I didn't have to worry about the floor. I grew up in London during the 40s, uh, 30s, 40s and 50s. I was used to this lower working class existence and was surrounded by people for it so very often there was a lot of bawdiness around and uh, I was very sort of influenced by that not consciously but remembering it 
So um, Mad Sally was a character out of that. And um, I put her in rude and bawdy situations. She was sort of unafraid to act out. And I used myself as a model and I started to paint her, painting them very large. And I would have continued, but something else intervened. I had a nasty accident and I couldn't walk. And so for a solid, oh, about a year, I sat right there in, in the stool at the window and drew the trees outside, just drew the trees, just, just for something to draw. And then I decided that things were changing in my mind. I was not inventing things anymore, but I was seeing, not just looking, I was seeing. I got a lot of attention from Mad Sally, and everybody would have been happy if I'd kept going on it. But it became unsatisfying after I started to draw the trees. When I began to walk again, my drawing started to change. I started to manipulate the paper and things like that. I would get a very lightweight chair and sit down outside and draw and then come in and start doing things with the drawing. Probably into the 90s, I worked on a whole series of what I called black paintings. And so I did this whole series of uh, paintings with um, oil paint and wax. The jawbone I just think of as a focus for the painting. This is gold leaf in here. Um, so I did a whole series of those. Here's another one, much smaller. This painting is called Fish for obvious reasons. And uh, it's a buried gold leaf. Um, in that it has a, a wash of black on it. And I thought of these horizontal bands of wax and paint as uh, deep, dark water. So this bloody great big fish is, you know, right on the bottom of the water. I live my entire life every single day, all day long, seven days a week, working on this work. So it has become me and I have become it. And the idea that it needs to get better, it needs to become something else, not so damn conservative and so on, is coming directly from me and my need to continue to learn, never, never stop learning. <laughs>